90.3 WHPC now presents Law You Should Know. The law affects every aspect of our lives, our home, our jobs, and our recreational activities. Now, learn about the law and how to protect yourself against the loss of your liberty or property and learn how to stand up for your rights and seek compensation when you have been wronged. Your host for Law You Should Know is attorney Kenneth J. Landau, a past dean of the Nassau Academy of Law and frequently lectures to lawyers on ethics and avoiding problems with clients and to the public on how to choose and use lawyers. This is Law You Should Know on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Hi, this is Ken Landau and welcome to Law You Should Know. Our special guest today is Dr. Duffy Spencer. She is a social psychologist in private practice, and she's also the host of Just Relationships right here on 90.3 WHPC, which is on right after the broadcast of Law You Should Know. She's also, you can also hear her shows on the Nassau Community website, nccradio.org, where she has an interesting array of interviews with all kinds of, of psychologists and sociologists covering almost every aspect of psychology and mental illness. It's a wealth of information of, of interest to everyone. But Dr. Duffy, I've, I've asked her to come on the program today to help us lawyers and others who are meet, dealing with the challenges of COVID. It's affected all of us in some way, and we need some insight and wisdom from Dr. Duffy to know we're not alone and how we can help our colleagues, our friends, younger people, older people to get through this challenge so we'll be in a better place in a few months from now and and keep our mental and physical well-being. Dr. Duffy, welcome back to Law You Should Know. Thank you so much, Ken. I like I like how you put that in a better place. And well, we, I, want to, we want to keep people from sinking down. And, and I think we and with your help, we can leave everyone in a better place, our clients, our colleagues, maybe even strangers. And there's an expression, um, stronger in the broken places. Have you ever heard of that expression? Stronger Not really in, in the law. We're just okay. trying to break people down. But, but yes. I think it's important to reach out and tell and 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 touch people and communicate with them, even even strangers. We need that kind of a interaction in these times. Yes, we have to absolutely, without a doubt, reach out and, and touch people. And uh, I believe it takes a lot of courage to be vulnerable. And um, this is a reframing, a major reframing, because people usually look at vulnerability as something weak, more especially men. So uh, absolutely, the, I, I believe, again, courage to reach out and tell the truth about yourself and what it's really like uh, for you. Because most of us, all human beings, even um, in other cultures, practice something called impression management, which is means to manage the most favorable impressions that others would have of us. And because we're so good at this, uh, we don't we don't read behind other people's masks, but we know what's going on inside of us to some degree. So we wind up buying people's perfect roles, and then we think we're the only screw up. So for a lawyer, you're always interested in presenting your best self, your Rambo lawyer self. But it's important to let your guard down, maybe not to your clients, but maybe to your colleagues or your friends or acquaintances and say, you know, this is a little tough on me. I, I, uh, the isolation is killing me. I haven't seen my relatives or I, I can't go on a trip. To, to let them know how it's affecting you and then listen in return so they can share their concerns. Yes. Give yourself license to be human and share your inner life again with trusted others. And in terms of impression management, I'm thinking about uh, a lawyer who came to me and he was very upset because um, he had he had had a real uh, confrontation with a judge and the judge read him as being very angry. And um, then the judge talked to him in a certain way and he then reacted in a certain way and and he lost the case 
And um, so he came to me because I'm an uh, expert in relationships as well as communication skills, and he wanted to know what he could do to, to be on the same side as the judge and to have the judge be supportive of him. So I talked to him about two things in terms of nonverbal communication because he professed he was not really angry with the judge, even though the judge saw him that way. His glasses and his unibrow. He was wearing very thick glasses that obscured his face, and he had a brow line. You know what a unibrow is. It goes right across the top of the nose. So I suggested to him that that he shave that so that he had two brows instead of one and change his glasses to, to lighter glasses. Right, because he accepted those things, and maybe his close friends accepted those close things, but it might be a, a turnoff or negative to other people or to strangers. If he's talking, arguing something against lawyers or meeting colleagues or speaking to a jury, I've had a beard my professional career. And when I started in the law, you know, there were very few attorneys with beards. And some people told me I, I should really shave it. But I, you know, I, I found a lawyer and judge who had a beard. It, the importance yeah. to me was just keeping it well trimmed. And now it's not such a big deal. But you want to maintain, a, you know, a, a neutral persona, perhaps wearing neutral clothing, a, a neutral demeanor, neutral eyeglasses, so nothing will a client, a colleague, or a judge who's in a position, you know, where they're in charge, will not take anything the wrong way. Yes, the and to I, deal with judges and others diplomatically, because they're you know they're in charge and they control the, the fate of you and your client in so, to some extent. But now things are that much more intense because of COVID. Uh, lawyers are people too. It is important that that lawyers share their concerns with um, their colleagues or perhaps their friends. They may be concerned about their workload. They may be concerned about no downtime. They may be concerned about going into an office or working closely with people where they're uncertain about the safeguards in place. How should they vent those concerns or uh, decide what what the, the concerns are they must fight for? And it could be true for anyone, any professional or uh, office worker. Well, I always follow the serenity prayer. What can we change and the courage to change it and the serenity to let go of what we can't change? So um, lawyers are taught, generally speaking, to be adversarial, to fight, to speak up, to confront, certainly protect their clients. And lawyers also tend to be analytical, left brain people. And um, if a lawyer works with a firm and, and, and they don't have their own practice, they can uh, also be what's called intrapreneurial instead of entrepreneurial, meaning they have the entrepreneurial spirit, even though they are technically an employee. And there is a lot of pressure on that. The sense of if it is to be, it's up to me. As you pointed out, that's really not the case. You know, when John Donne said, no man is an island, he said that, I don't know how many years ago, 200, 300 years ago, I'd have to look it up. But the truth is, no person is an island, even though that's what we've been taught. In America, as an extremely individualistic society, we, we are taught that if we have any needs, we're weak and we're needy. So... I would say to be careful if you're really going deep in terms of disclosure. However, on the other side, COVID is the, is the great um, groundbreaker, just like the weather. The weather used to be, but now with the age of, of uh, weather, uh, climate control, climate change, people are even afraid to comment on the weather because so many people don't believe in client, uh, climate change. Right. Just going back to your work environment issue, uh, should people pick and choose their battles carefully if they're asked to work shoulder to shoulder from someone without a divider, without appropriate ventilation, they're, they're told to come back to the office and they're concerned about their psychological or their physical health issues, uh, should they 
should they broach it? Should they practice it with you or a friend or colleague first to see the best approach? We absolutely, number one, we pick our battles and it it is not always useful to be assertive in a toxic environment. For instance, if you have a toxic boss, uh, you can decide, well, strategically, I'm not going to speak up to this person. However, the exception is our own safety. I have one client who really had a falling out with her boss because he insisted she come to work. Yes, there were masks, and she actually could have worked virtually. She could have, but he insisted that, that she, uh, she come to work, and she, she went because those were the conditions of her employment, but they completely lost their friendship, and she she's, has been so miserable. So bosses yeah. have an opportunity to keep their workers happy and productive if they don't impose these anxieties or concerns or exacerbate them on their workers. Absolutely. And we look at human relations as, as so important. We have to look at it as commerce. You know, um, the reason we have HR departments in organizations is not because the the owners of the company care about their employees' happiness as much as they have to. They have to be concerned about the quality of life of their employees. Otherwise, they'll go somewhere else. And also, if they stay there, they won't be as happy or as productive or as a, a positive force for the company. Exactly, exactly. So well, this is a chance, this is an opportunity for the employer to, to motivate the employee by acknowledging their concerns and trying to, to meet them halfway or trying to deal with some of their concerns for the moment. Yes, and we know in the workplace that we're supposed to give strokes for doing, called strokes for doing. If it's at a boy, at a girl... It's not good enough, but it's better than nothing. And so most managers have learned to give strokes for doing. However, it's wonderful to give strokes for being. I remember when I was the executive director of a crisis intervention agency, and the person I reported to came in, uh, and she was fiddling with my chair, if it was the right height for me. And she actually got on the floor in her skirts and heels and and was moving the, adjusting the chair. And I am standing there looking at her and feeling, oh, my God, this person really cares about my comfort. And then she, she stands up and she says, well, I just want you to work better. I just want you to be, you know, more productive. And it was okay. I mean, but what about strokes for being? And the, a stroke for being would be, I really want you to feel comfortable. Tell me what your preference is. Would you like to work virtually if that's not possible? Let's figure out a hybrid. Let's stagger the shifts. Let's, let's move the desks. And if Let- the boss does not initiate that conversation, should the worker bring it up? Absolutely. In a gentle way, that just to say, I'm concerned about this. I've heard stuff in the news. A friend of mine came down with COVID, and I, you know, I, I don't want to be in that boat. Exactly. Only from the I. I am concerned. I am frightened. I heard that. It's very, very contagious. And I'd like to follow the rules that we were given. And, um, and if you feel it's appropriate, I think. You could even say, I feel a little uncomfortable asking you, uh, and you can own it. It it, it is my concern. Can you you tell them that this might distract me from working, from being focused on work or or work putting in the extra time because I'll be concerned about it? And if if I have a little more protection, I can focus on work? You can certainly make a business case. I would say first to just talk about your own personal comfort and you know i need i need to be able to feel safe in my environment so that i can i can focus i would prefer that there's also again what's called strokes for being rather than just strokes for doing but yes you can certainly make a business case 
Should you be ready to compromise a little bit, perhaps re- revisit some of the other concerns in a week or two? You'll see how it goes. Not when it comes to your personal okay. safety. So you should have a list of, of must-haves that you must have to be feel safe in that work environment. Yeah, it's always, when we go into negotiation, it's always what is negotiable, what is non-negotiable. And, and, you're, and you're, you're a social psychologist, so what if you are online at the retail store, you're getting a cup of coffee, and different people you know, have different levels of concern? If you want someone to socially distance from you, if you go into a restaurant and you want a table 12 feet away, if you want enhanced ventilation, if you go, let's say you socialize with someone, you want enhanced ventilation, you want to have social distancing, how do you express that without triggering a fight? Well, with friends, let's say the most important rule for influencing someone is to use the magic word, because... And I just have to let you know, I will be so careful in staying at least six feet away from you because I have comorbidities or whatever it is because I'm really, really scared. So the magic word, because, for influencing people. And you say because you're concerned about them? You know, I want to keep my germs from you rather than making it about their germs coming to you? Well, I always believe in telling the truth, so I'm concerned about me and I'm concerned. It's the and. And when we're dealing with a stranger in a grocery store, we don't have to give a because. That's that's too intimate. But the basic rule of thumb is always to give someone the benefit of the doubt and to assume that they didn't realize what they were doing. What if they don't have the same level of concern that you do? What if... They're, you know, three feet is close enough to them or they believe a mask is enough. How can you reach some agreement with them so there's no fight? <laughs> well, you leave everything in the eye. I, uh, excuse me, um, we're a little too close. I try not to blame people wherever possible rather than you are too close to me. We're a little too close and I'm going to step back. And by the way, your mask is not covering your nose. Would you please cover cover your face? And that could be very personal. I mean, you might you might be you might be accomplished more saying it to a friend, uh, you know, a stranger. You never know what will happen. Yeah. Uh, again, you always err on the side of friendliness. It could be uh, just a gentle touching, you know, show, pointing to your face to show the other person and making some sort of gesture. You know, your eyes can speak friendliness if if they can't see your smile. But, uh, you know, and would would you mind? Would you please? Would you please do that? Uh, I'm I'm sorry to to bother you. I'm sorry to ask. And, you know, we have to be careful when we don't know someone. They they may be carrying a gun, you know. So, but it's, it's always better to give people the benefit of the doubt and and be very, very polite. Would you mind, please, excuse me, and thank you. Basic courtesy. What are some other tips that if you're, you know, if you're more, if you were anxious before and you're more anxious because of COVID, if you were a little bit depressed before for whatever reason and you're a little bit more depressed of COVID, if you're a little bit more, you know, shyer or less social because it's it's hard for people to be social in the traditional senses, what can people do on their own? How can they monitor and, and, and you know, modify their behavior a little bit? Well, I like the way you started with sharing. That's That's very good. And then sharing with ourselves. Most people are not that self-aware. And we know that statistically, anxiety and depression have gone up across the board. And many people I, have been willing to be more open. COVID has become the great equalizer. So, And I, it's also given permission for, to people to open a dialogue because it's in the news every day. And they, and they, and they hear about everyone is affected by this. And, and some people... It's, you know, it's, it's been several steps back or made life that much more challenging for them. Right. So we want to share how we're feeling. And yes, I am feeling more challenged. And the ultimate 
mark of a healthy person is that they are adaptive, that a person can say, and as they say in Zen Buddhism, given that these are the circumstances, how do I proceed? So given that I don't know the future, the future is less certain, and it creates anxiety for me, then again, I go back to the serenity prayer. What can I do and what can't I do? And to give ourselves permission to have our feelings, instead of denying the extra anxiety, we can be a self-coach, and coaches ask people smart questions. So anxiety is just a fancy word for fear. So if I'm feeling very anxious, what am I scared of? And when I teach stress management, we always look at that. What is the worst that can happen and what is the best that can happen? So what are some ways to start this dialogue with a friend or colleague or train, you know, stranger? Normally, we might not talk to them about how they're adopting to the world, how it's affecting them, how they're feeling. What are some ways to start that dialogue? You know, how's, how's work going? How are you managing with, with COVID? Or is your, is your travel affected? What's, what are some good ways to do yeah. that and to respond? The way to have excellent conversations is what you're describing, which is inquiry, asking questions. A gentle inquiry. Yeah, gentle inquiry, uh, showing an interest. And the second is what is called self-disclosure. So people are so invested in this extreme individualism that everything is fine with me. I'm going to commit suicide in a half an hour, but everything is fine with me to say, well, even if that person has said it's hard it, or they, they say, oh, it's fine. No, no problem. Well, you can say, oh, I'm glad for you. And actually, it has been a problem for me. I notice I'm not sleeping as well. I notice that it's, it's scary for me not to know the future here or the future is so unpredictable. And then I get frightened. What if I did get it? And what if I did die from it? And some people are concerned about their social interactions. I haven't been able to see my friends, my relatives, my children, the people in the next town. I haven't been able to meet them for dinner or go to the movies anymore. We are hardwired to connect. We are hardwired in our brains to connect. That is the basic need. The number one need for human beings is inclusion, something called inclusion. We all need to belong to some group. So by opening up the door to that conversation, you may giving, be giving people an outlet and yourself an outlet to vent some of these feelings or concerns. And to, you know, that might replace some of the other engagements that you had before COVID. Well, that's well put, Ken. We all need outlets in telling the truth so that if I am willing to be self-disclosing and, and to talk about being human, it's... A lawyer can say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm feeling lonely. I'm missing my grandchildren. I'm I tired have, of Zoom. <laughs> I'm tired of Zoom. I am totally Zoomed out. I'm a Zoom zombie now. Or, or I'm afraid to go to the workplace. Whatever your concerns are, you know, I'm afraid to go out to eat. I miss going to the movies. I, I, you know, I've been isolated. It, it's okay to make these things because everyone has them to some degree. And we also have a dis-ease of perfectionism, and lawyers are very competitive. If you look at a gender split, males tend to look more at the hierarchy, that that you're either, everything is rank order, you're either one up or one down from me, whereas females see the world in a more flat way. And and whether you're one up or one down, this this COVID situation has affected everyone. So it's, it's, you can have that dialogue with someone above you or below you because it's, it's affected everyone on, on maybe on different levels, but on some level. It's a great equalizer. And, and it's even a great equalizer internationally that people from other countries have the same problems and it's, and it's all the same. It's around loss of connection, loss of community, Uh, fear of fatality, unpredictability, 
looking at, at things we can't change um, instead of looking at things we can change, learning to adapt to what is, not what it should be. So is that an important thing that you should share your ideas on trying to adapt or ask other people how they have tried to adapt and maybe that will give you some idea and that's a good way to begin a conversation? I think it's a brilliant way to begin. A and that could work with anyone, a, a co-worker, a neighbor, a stranger. Yeah, an open-ended question. How are you dealing with the incredible stress of COVID? And people won't find it that you know, crazy to talk to a stranger because we're all going, we're all in this together. Yeah, we're definitely all in this together. And most people would welcome the idea to share their experiences or their ideas or their concerns. Well, I, I think people enjoy um, when people are interested in them, especially if you come from a sense of a flat structure that one person to another person, you ignore the hierarchy of the workplace or even the, the lawyer client roles and you know person to person what's it what has it been like for you and if these are, and if you're a professional or a business owner these are good things to reach out to your clients it's a good opportunity to reach out to client to show to make it a more personal relationship Absolutely. Just have a more personal conversation we all need to be more human we all need to show our hearts more the world needs soft-hearted open-hearted kind, caring people. Okay. I just want to mention Dr. Duffy Spencer, Spencer a social psychologist, and her, rela- her show, Just Relationships, is broadcast immediately following Law You Should Know on 90.3 WHPC, Wednesday at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time, and there are podcasts of many of her shows, as well as many shows of Law You Should Know on nccradio.org. Dr. Duffy, just give us your website where people can find out about your counseling service over Zoom, your seminars that you run, and your training for organizations on many of these issues. Yes, uh, Duffy at drduffy.com. Duffy at drduffy.com. You can Google Duffy Spencer, Spencer with a C, and Duffy Spencer at Gmail. Okay, and Dr. Duffy, you've given us many interesting ideas for connecting, for for coping. Any final thoughts for lawyers and others? Love, Love yourself, forgive yourself for not being perfect. Accept that it's natural and normal to be scared, to be anxious. The world is scary. A lot of us are trying to find our footing, our new footing, So be gentle with yourself and with others. And if something's of concern to you, you should speak out. Um, And it, you know, sometimes you can get support and ideas by talking to your your colleagues or or neighbors or friends or relatives. And it you could it's 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 an opportunity to broach things that are a little more personal because everyone has those concerns to some level. Be real. Be human. COVID is the great equalizer. And I just want to remind everyone that. Dr. Duffy's show, Just Relationships, is broadcast right after Law You Should Know at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time every Wednesday on 90.3 WHPC, podcast of many of her interviews where covering all aspects of psychology and, and self-help, as well as other shows from Law You Should Know, including this one, are available at nccradio.org. Please join us next week at this same time for another program on Law You Should Know. Mm-hmm.